Just waiting for everything to show me that it is online. Uh, Facebook is online and YouTube is online. Perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Abby. I am the founder of DIY Fashion Rebel, and I help people learn how to sew their own clothing at home. Even if you're an absolute beginner, and not even if you're an absolute beginner, like I focus specifically on beginners. Why? Because I've been there, okay? I taught myself how to sew clothing at home and it was a nightmare. I cried a lot. <laughs> I was confused, overwhelmed, frustrated, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. Because when you start sewing, there's so much to learn and it's helpful to have the internet, but at the same time, I just found it to be overwhelming and I could never quite figure out if I was doing it right or if I was going the right direction or any of those things. So if that sounds familiar, let me know in the comments. Say, yes, I've been there. Let me know what your biggest struggle is right now as a beginner and then breathe a big sigh of relief because I am creating a system to help teach you how to sew clothing step by step. So there's not all this running around the internet trying to figure out how to do this, where to do this, how to... No. Just one step at a time moving you forward. So it all starts with the five steps to sewing with confidence. And that's what we're doing here as part of this live series. Uh, the five steps look like this. It's this really nice easy to follow PDF and when you sign up you get this PDF and all of these little text areas are clickable. So you click the text and it brings you to either a printable or a how-to video just like this one and you'll work through them so you can start sewing with confidence in just five days. Okay? Easy peasy. This all, like each step probably only takes about 30 minutes. So quickly, quickly, you can get started sewing with confidence. So let's dive into step two, which is what we're working on today. And if you would like to get access to the five steps, just head to the uh, description or the comments if you're here live, description if you're on the replay, and uh, grab your five steps today. Okay, so let me drop that in the chat. Okay, and then let's jump in to step two. So if we're looking at step two here next to me, we have get to know your machine. Yesterday we talked about the uh, downloading and printing the machine parts PDF. That looks like. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to do um, set up your sewing machine. That is the wrong text. I will correct that. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do is find out what each part does on your sewing machine. Okay? So yesterday was finding the part. It is going to be learning what each part does. Okay? Are you excited? Let me know in the comments how you're feeling. I know this looks like a lot of parts. It's so easy to find it on your machine. There's really not that many parts. It seems like a lot, but let's talk through it. I promise it's not as, it's not as overwhelming as it first appears, okay? So let me know in the comments how you're feeling. Are you excited, nervous? Let me know. I always want to hear how you guys are doing. So let's get rid of that list. And I am going to be using
So the first thing on the machine is the thread tension dial. And that is what is linked to here on my machine. Okay, so the tension dial is typically just a list of numbers. Now I'm gonna switch to my camera view so you can see this a little bit better. So it is a dial here on the top of my machine and it has numbers across it. So you see you have these little lines between it, three, four, five. And if I rotate this, you'll see it goes all the way down to zero. And then I can go all the way up to nine, okay? And that's pretty common on most machines, but you'll did notice if I scroll back that these don't have lines between them but there is a line between five and four and four and three. Now, the reason those lines are there is there's usually some way to signify the most common range, okay? So in general, your, your machine, machine should sit between five and three on this dial, okay? So that's where it is, kind of what it looks like. And so what does the tension dial do? So when you sew, this may be brand new to some people, and that's going to be amazing. We're going to learn today. So when you sew, what actually ends up happening is if this is my fabric, okay, your machine is going to sew using two threads, okay? You have a bottom thread, which is going to be on a bobbin like this. And you have a top thread that's going to be on a spool. Okay, and we're gonna talk more about this in a little bit. But these two threads are going to play tug of war with each other, okay? So the top thread is going to go like this. And the bottom thread is going to do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, and what happens at these points where it's, they're meeting, like a big X right there, what's happening here is you're forming a little knot, okay? And these knots are what hold your fabric together, okay? So you can, there's videos on this that show you how these knots are created. It's not so very important. But what you do need to know is that the top thread and the bottom thread are playing tug of war with each other, okay? They're both pulling, so the bottom thread is pulling down and the top thread is pulling up, okay? So what happens is, sometime, if the top thread, if the top thread is pulling harder than the bottom thread, you're gonna run into problems, okay? Your, your stitches aren't gonna look very nice. And the same thing vice versa. If the bottom thread is pulling more than the top thread, then you're gonna have problems. This is when your stitches don't look very good. Whether, whether your stitches are super, super loose, really big and loopy, or your stitches are really tiny and cramped together, these are tension issues. And it means that your threads are not playing tug of war equally. And the way that you adjust how much the top thread is pulling is to use this dial right here, the tension dial, okay? So if you need the top tension to pull more, you'll use a higher number. And if you need the, the top thread to pull less, you use a lower number. Okay, I have another video later in step five that talks more in depth about tension, but this is what that tension dial does. 
So let's go here again. Yeah, this tension dial helps you get the tension set correctly on your machine so that your stitches look really nice and pretty, okay? This is the biggest problem people have is getting their tension set right when they're starting out. So this is a very important um, knob, wheel, whatever this is, <laughs> to be aware of, okay? So that's your tension. And again, don't worry, uh, step five will go even more in depth with this, okay? This is just the basic concept so you kind of know what's going on, okay? So thread tension dial. Okay, the next thing they have pointed on here is the thread take-up lever. Now, again, <laughs> before I go on, let's take a deep breath. I am going to point things out to you today, and at the end of this, if you're not familiar with your machine, it's going to feel like a lot of information. Don't worry, okay? It's a lot of information for everybody when we're first getting started. It just takes using your machine again and again and seeing this material a couple of times until it starts sinking in. So if just after this first one, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm like, take a deep breath, okay? We have to learn at some point and we're gonna learn today. Okay, so if you need to come back to this video a second and third time, do that. And when you sew with your machine, make the effort to think about what is the name of this? What does this part do? Because at the beginning, it's gonna be confusing. Like, what is this again? But the more you do this, that you're gonna remember it because it doesn't change, okay? Every machine has these same parts. Every machine works the same way and it's going to become second nature. It's just going to take some time to get used to it at the beginning, okay? So don't freak out. Don't stress. <laughs> just come back to this video. Watch it again. You got this, okay? So the next thing we have is the thread take-up lever. Now what this is, is I'm going to swap to here. I'm gonna zoom out again, or maybe, okay, we'll go here, and we'll combine this so you can see me here. So on the side of the machine back here is a really big round knob, and we will be talking about this later, it's further down the list, but it is the hand wheel <laughs> okay and you're going to turn the hand wheel so i <laughs> i left my machine taped up so we would go everything together but it's going to cause me problems right this second for explaining this i'm just going to untape this one for now the joy of doing things live, everyone. <laughs> okay. So, if I turn this wheel, okay, I'm gonna turn my hand, I'm gonna turn it forward. Well, maybe I will. Oh, I have tape again. More tape, more tape problems. <laughs> I'm just taking this blue tape off. Again, it's a brand new machine, so why it has tape on it. Okay, now I'm going to turn this towards the front of the machine, okay? And while I do this, ooh, it is going to be tricky to see it in there. Okay. You see this little silver piece that's moving. So it comes up and it goes down again. And as I turn this, it comes up and it goes down again. Okay, so this lever up here 
is very, very important, okay? This is part of setting the tension, like we had talked about here, for your thread and your stitches as you're sewing, okay? Now, we will talk again about this piece when we learn how to thread your machine, okay? But just know that this helps set the tension on your sewing machine, okay? That's its full purpose, is helping to set the tension. So, tension take-up lever, thread cutter. So, on the side of your machine, this side, you have this little piece of plastic down here. Let's zoom in. And so what this is, is you see this plastic housing on the outside, and then inside is a little piece of metal, and it's a little razor blade. So what you can do is you take your thread on either side of this and pull down, and it will cut it for you. It's very nice, so when you finish a row of stitches, you can just pull your fabric up and over this, and it will cut your threads. Very nice. So thread cutter here on the side of your machine. Presser foot. Okay, so these are very important things. <laughs> so we're gonna scoot down a little bit more. So, the presser foot on your sewing machine, I like don't, <laughs> I thought leaving these tape things on here would be helpful to like show you taking them off and how to start your machine, but honestly it's just a little bit annoying. So you can just, if you have a brand new machine, you can just take these off, okay? I'm just carefully peeling off all these little pieces of blue tape that came on it for packaging, okay? So, uh, I will leave that one for the second. Okay, so the presser foot is this chunk of metal right here. Now, maybe this is easier to see if I, Put something under it. Okay, it's this chunk of metal. Okay, and this is really important. <laughs> you will use this every time you sew. And this is what helps press the fabric against the machine so that your fabric stays in place while you're stitching. Okay. So what I can do is, you see right now, it's pressed all the way down against the machine. So if I try to move this piece of paper, it's stuck. I can't pull it out. <laughs> so what I can do is I can raise it, and then I can take things out. So there's space under here now, and I press it down, and it's all the way down, okay? Now, something that's interesting about presser feet is you can, uh, we shall see how much longer that works. Okay, so you can um, change these out depending on what you're doing, okay? So if you're putting in a zipper, you may want a different presser foot than a button rather than doing stretch fabric or doing woven. There are lots of different types of presser feet. So what you can do is if I turn this sideways, see this little black bar on the back, I can just press that and my presser foot drops out and I can swap this for a different one, okay? So if I wanna leave this one in or I'll put a new one in, I line it up, this, this bar here, under the little rainbow shaped 
and then here. And then I'm just going to lower my presser foot and it will catch on there if I have it lined up right, okay? It's lined up, it will go down. When I raise it, it's attached again, okay? So that's presser feet. They're very important and there's so many of them. They're kind of fun to collect depending on what you like to sew, okay? So, presser foot. How is this going so far? Are you guys enjoying the little pieces? Are you learning something? Let me know which is your favorite thing we've covered so far. And if you've had any aha moments about like, oh, I didn't know it did that, or oh, I wasn't aware of that. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so the presser foot, the needle plate. So the needle plate, to describe whoa this piece of metal this square with all of these lines on it okay and it's just the plate with the hole in the bottom where the needle can poke through down to the bottom thread okay so that's the needle plate um, removable accessory storage. Most machines have removable storage, and most of them look like this, where you have this front rectangle, and you see this line and the plastic that's cut out. You have a little arrow here. So if I just push this sideways, this direction of the arrow, if I just push like that, this comes out. Again, I have the tape on mine because it's new. But if I open this, I have storage in here. So I could put things in here, store them in here, thread, needles, presser feet. And then I can put it back on here and store things right there inside my machine. Nifty, huh? Okay, the reverse sewing lever. So when you're sewing, you typically go forward. 99% of the time, you're going to go forward. But sometimes you need to go backwards. And if you want your machine to go backwards while you're sewing, you're going to use the reverse lever. And that is right here on the front of your machine, almost always directly above your needle. Okay. And so when you use your machine, it's going to automatically run forward. So it's going to stitch and your fabric will move towards the back of the machine. And it will move forward along the piece you're sewing. Now, if you want to go reverse, you'll just take this lever, press down, and the machine will go in the opposite direction. Now, if that was confusing, don't worry. I'm going to show you exactly how to do this tomorrow in step three. Okay, I'm going to give you examples and show me actually doing all of these things. So just, but just know for now that this is the reverse lever to sew backwards. Okay? So, um, bobbin stopper. So this one, let me double check on my diagram. Yeah, the bobbin stopper. So this one is also interesting. It's on the top of your machine. It's right here on the end. And this has to do with threading your bobbin. Now, the bobbin is the word that we use to describe the bottom thread. Let me get this position. Okay. Now, when we talked about tension, we talked about how we have a top thread on a spool and a bottom thread on a bobbin. Okay, now this is the bobbin. And it looks like the accessories. It looks like this. Okay, and you see it's empty, it's just a piece of plastic. But what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in thread and put it in the bottom of our machine. So to wind this, we use these, this little area. 
And the first part that they're mentioning here is the bobbin stopper. Now, the bobbin stopper is important because it pairs with the, oh, they skipped it. Okay, we're gonna skip to 15 really quick because they go together. Um, the bobbin winding spindle. So you're gonna take your bobbin, you're gonna put it on the winding spindle. And when you want to wind your bobbin, you're gonna pull the whole spindle towards the stopper. So I'm just gonna pull this over. And you see how it actually moves. Okay, and the bobbin stopper helps you tell how full the bobbin is. Like you'll know it's full once it hits the stopper. And it kind of just helps you remember, oh yeah, if I want to wind the bobbin, I have to move this towards the stopper. So in this position, the spindle will move, it'll spin, and we'll put thread on it. In this position, the spindle will not move, but the needle will. So we'll actually be sewing down here, and this won't move, okay? So that is the bobbin winding spindle and the bobbin stopper, okay? Oh, and a bobbin here, fabulous. <laughs> okay, and I will be showing you exactly how to use these in step four, okay? I'm gonna talk you through how to wind the bobbin and how to thread your machine and all of those things. So, bobbin stopper. Okay, then we have the stitch width dial which is actually this one. And a lot of machines have these nice images in the plastic where you can see it's like a long dash and the dash just gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And dashes are a common way of uh, showing a stitch. So, if I was going to draw a stitch, 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 stitch. I'm sure you've seen this on like icons and things. Okay, so here's a row of stitches. Now, when sometimes <laughs> you'll want your stitches to be different lengths. So sometimes you'll want long stitches like this, and sometimes you'll want tiny little baby stitches. Okay, now I'm not going to get into the why of that today but sometimes you want long, sometimes you want short. It's a fact of sewing. And in order to change the length of your uh, stitch, you're going to use this lever, this little knob turning thing here, okay? So four is going to give you a long stitch, and zero is going to give you a very short stitch, okay? So you'll just turn this and it will adjust the length of your stitches, okay? So stitch length dial, pattern selector dial. Okay, so the pattern selector dial, this is probably the one that gets most people a little bit confused, is if I move down and zoom out a little bit, okay? So you can stitch using different patterns, okay? You can do a buttonhole, that's this first one, a straight stitch, a zigzag, and then so on and so forth. You also have decorative stitches. And if you want to select one of these, then you will turn this knob down here. And actually, if I move this here, <laughs> okay, so number one is a buttonhole. So right now, I would be doing a buttonhole. Number two is a straight stitch. So if I turn this number two, I am now doing a straight stitch. Number three, whoop, three, I'm doing a zigzag and so on and so forth. And you'll notice that as I turn this, the needle actually moves to adjust for the type of stitch you're going to do. So again, if I go back and you look over here, you see it jumped. So this, the needle will move to different positions to account for the different stitches that you're doing, okay? And you can pick your stitches using the stitch selection dial.
Okay? Easy enough. Um, oh, I skipped one, number nine. The stitch width dial. So if we go back to the top of the machine, Oh, we fell a little bit. That's okay. So, here's a little recap for you. Look at the top of the machine. So, we have our stitch length dial, and we have our tension dial. The last one we have up here is our stitch width dial. So, again, this one changes the length of your stitch. But if you're not doing a straight stitch, if you're doing a zigzag, your zigzag could be different widths. And what I mean by that is your zigzag could be narrow or it could be wide. Right? So that's what this knob lets you do. Now, if I'm being honest, uh, maybe there's something else I could do really quick. Okay? So if I put dots like this, okay, so the distance from here to here, okay, it could be the same. This is confusing. But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is this distance is your length, and this distance is your width. So you could have a wider stitch with a short length, or you could have a wide stitch with a wide length, or you could have it like this, okay? So again, this is length, and this direction is width, okay? And a lot of scribbles on here. If this is making sense, let me know. If it's not, I will do a separate video to explain this better. Okay, so you have stitch width and stitch length that you can adjust with those knobs on top. Um, one step buttonhole lever. Now your machine may not have this feature. If you're looking to buy a sewing machine, I would highly recommend getting one that does have this. But this, if you have it, is going to be located right here next to your needle. Okay. So let's zoom in here. Okay. Getting down to my last few pieces of blue tape. So this blue tape is actually holding the buttonhole lever in place. So, there's a couple of things down here. Um, so the buttonhole lever is this silver lever in the back, okay? So what you're going to do if you have this is you're going to pull the lever down and then you see the word push written on it. Move this down just a hair. The word push written on it. I'm just going to push it towards the back of the machine. You'll hear it click and lean back a little bit. That's the position you're going to put this in to do a one step buttonhole. Now, that's a whole nother video that I have on how to use this, but if you're looking for it, if you're not sure what it is, 
This is the one-step buttonhole lever, and you'll find it right next to your needle. Okay? Now, in the same place, we have the automatic threader. Now, again, this is a feature that not all machines have, but if you're looking to buy a machine, I would highly recommend getting one with this feature. But that is this little white plastic piece here. And it works in a similar way. You pull it all the way down, and you'll notice that once you, uh, let's see. Oh, this one's good. Okay. So you're going to push it down and twist it so that these little plastic arms wrap around the needle. Okay. And again, I have another video that shows you how to use an automatic needle threader. I will link it in the description below. Um, but this is where it is. And what it does is it threads the... Um, it puts the thread, your top thread, through the eye of the needle for you. So you don't have to like squint and get down here and try to shove it in there. This little plastic piece will just pull it through for you with a tiny little hook. Okay, so there's another video on that. Check the description, but that's what that does and that's where you find it. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the top of the machine and the diagram says horizontal spool pin, which most machines have, but mine's actually a vertical. So typically on the top of your sewing machine, you will have a spool pin that runs right along here. Now mine is a little bit different in that it's actually this little piece. You pull it up and you can, that's, you can, you have to um, put a spool of thread right on here. And this is where you start for threading your bobbin and threading your sewing machine, okay? So this is the spool pin. Um, Bobbin winding spindle, we talked about that. That's one, this one right here. It's where you put your bobbin to fill it. Okay. Uh, you might have a spot to put a second spool because sometimes you need two. So if your machine has that, it will be listed on your manual. Mine does not. Um, hand wheel. So again, we talked about this earlier too. It's this knob on the side. That you spin towards you, always towards the front. And when you spin this, you are manually moving the needle. So maybe it's easier if I go sideways. Zoom out. Okay. So now, as I turn the neat turn the hand wheel, I'm going to turn it forward. You can see that the needle moves. So if you ever need to manually move the needle, this is how you do it. Use this big. Um, knob on the side and you always turn it towards you towards the front of the machine okay fabulous uh, power and light switch once you have your machine plugged in and ready to run which is what we're covering tomorrow every step will move you along so again we're going to re be revisiting all of this in later steps so you don't have to know it all right now but, uh, oops, camera fell off the table. Um, once you plug in your foot pedal, this is your on off switch. Once it's plugged in, you can turn your machine on and off using this switch. That's your power and light switch. Your main plug socket, this is where you will plug in. this 
ginormous connection that has your um, foot pedal and your uh, plug attached to it. Okay. So that is the main plug socket. The bobbin thread guide. Where are they saying that is? 20 and 21. Yep. Okay. So when we get to threading our machine, We're going to be using this chunk up here, okay? And it's your thread guide, okay? And there are pictures here to show you how to do this. And also in step four, I will show you how to thread your machine and do all of this, okay? But here is your upper thread guide and your bobbin thread guide. And it just helps the thread go the right direction so it doesn't get tangled or messed up and it also helps with tension okay so upper thread guide face plate what are they calling oh the face plate this chunk <laughs> the face plate I think it's just the outer housing of your machine is the faceplate. They're not really pointing at anything, and I don't really use that word, faceplate. Um, the handle, almost all machines have a handle. Mine is just a hole in the plastic. You might have an actual handle that comes up and over the top of your machine. This is where you should pick your machine up to make sure that you don't damage it in some way. Okay, the handle. The presser foot lifter, oh yeah, okay. So, back down by the needle. This was not a very logical order to do this on. I might have to change that. <laughs> okay, so, we talked about the presser foot earlier, but that's where you, um, this is the top, the presser foot that holds your fabric in place while you're stitching. It presses your fabric against the machine so it stays in place while you're stitching. Now you need to be able to raise this and lower it so you can actually put fabric in there. Because like right now, if this was fabric, I couldn't get it in there. So what you want to do is use this little lever. The lever will either be here on the side right next to your needle or it will be in the back of your machine. So, um, so it's either here or it will be here on the back of your machine. I can swap. Whoa. Or here on the back of your machine. So you can still see it right here or back here. Okay, those are your two options. It depends on the machine you're using. So, what you're going to do is take that lever and pull it up. You know, so the, the presser foot raises up, you press it down, and the presser foot will lower. Okay? So that raises and lowers your presser foot. Okay. Foot speed control, so that is <laughs> your pedal. This is how you control how fast you're going. So the foot speed control is your pedal, and this is all wrapped up with your power cord, okay? So, <laughs> we covered a lot today, and how does it feel? How does it feel now that you actually know what each component on your machine does? Do you feel better? Do you feel more confused? Let me know. Because no matter how you're feeling, it's how you're feeling. Like it's fine. If you feel confused, you feel confused. It's not it's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just the way life is right now. 
So now that we kind of know what, where each part is, what each part does, what we're going to be doing for the next couple of steps is actually using our machine. So as we move forward, I'm going to be using the terms, your presser foot, the hand wheel, the needle threader, to describe what we're doing. And that will give you a chance to hear the term and then use it on your machine. These will start to become more normal. You'll get used to them. You'll start knowing your machine better. And if at any time you're like, wait, what does that do again? What's going on? You can always reference this video. You can use your filled in chart, check your manual. Just be aware that for these first couple of times you use your machine, you're probably going to be a little bit confused as to like, what is this? What does it do? It takes practice to get used to, okay? But at least now you've seen all the parts, you kind of know what they do, and you're gonna become more familiar the more we use your machine, okay? So tomorrow we're gonna jump into step three, and step three, um, you're going to download and print some sewing practice sheets. Guys, these are so, so nice. You don't know it yet, but you will find out tomorrow. And then I'm going to show you how to set up your machine, like plugging it in, where to put the pedal, um, everything you need to know to set up. And we're going to take our first stitches. Okay. We're going to start sewing tomorrow. So get pumped. That's happening. <laughs> I can't wait to go through that with you guys. And thank you for joining me today. I know this was a longer video, a little, well, a little, a lot of information, but it's going to get easier and it's going to get more normal the more you play with it. So your sewing machine is your friend, okay? You don't need to be scared of it. Um, play with it, get used to it, sit here for a moment and just name the parts. Stitch length style, stitch selector, reverse button. Because once these become second nature, sewing is going to get a lot more fun. When you're not stressing and worried, and like, how do I, what is it, what is it, whoa. So spend some time with your machine today, and I will see you again tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.